program will begin in one minute. Kindly find your seats. Erev Tov and Bruchim Habaim to all. Welcome everyone to an amazing night. Is it Hayom Asa Hashem Nagila Vinismacha Vo? Tonight is a celebration of the Hank class of 2022. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to the 48th commencement exercises of the Hank High School. Ladies and gentlemen, please give your attention to the screen. It is now time to pay tribute to our seniors. Class of 2022, you have spent four years in Hank. Let's hear about those incredible impressions you've made on your teachers and administrators. As freshmen, this class was really special. They always expressed their opinions. They always had something to say, and they were involved, and they were all into it. They were all learning and so happy for one another. One kid got the answer right, and we'd make a big deal, but they would all be, they would all be so happy. They uh, had their clicks, but at the same time, even with their clicks and without their clicks, there was a camaraderie between them that really built them as a team. And seeing the way that you've grown into a full class like this is really something amazing to see. One memory about the class of 22 that I'll always remember is the morning of my birthday. They surprised me. They hired, organized a mariachi band and filled the gym with the entire school to sing me happy birthday. Or when you came and dressed up as mothers, it was really a great laugh. It was a lot of fun. My funniest memory has to be from my calculus class when we learned that the valedictorian of Dean Moskowitz has no idea who the Kardashians are and they're all over TV. No wonder he's valedictorian. One word to describe the class of 2022 by basis. Full of life, irreplaceable, potpourri, sweet, <laughs> so sweet. Passionate, caring, resilient. I would say resilient. Active, loving, energy, lady. Maybe tardy. <laughs> the song I would choose for the class of 2022 would be Don't Worry, Be Happy. Every day, no matter what, they came in with a smile, energy, and a lot of laugh. I can get by with a little help from my friends, from the Beatles, because their friendships and their bonds, no matter what day of the week, has always been impeccable. The book title that I would give this class is Great Expectations, because that's what we have here. Love You Forever by Robert Munch. In the story of a child that grows up, goes from being the one held by his mother to eventually, at the end of the story, the one holding his mother and caring for her. Although you were just here for four years, 
the connection that was created is one that is ongoing and is for life. The movie that would describe this graduating class would have to be Captain America Civil War. You may have your disagreements, you go your separate ways, but in the end, or end game, you come back together as you are right now, graduating together and starting your future post hack The Incredibles, everyone has within them a special talent, a special superpower, and I really can't wait to see how you guys become superheroes with your individual talents. Home Alone, Jurassic Park, <laughs> Little Rascals, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, um, maybe from the same era, um, The Breakfast Club. As a class, you've been through a lot. As you guys like to say, most of your high school experience was COVID, but you really persevered. You came through stronger, you came through with the same positive energy, and if anything, I think you became more unified from it. I think you guys had a lot to complain about over, over the years, but you didn't. You saw the good in situations, you saw the good in each other, the good in people. And that's an incredible bracha which you should carry with you for the rest of your lives. Thank you for all the happy times. Thank you for the practical jokes. And you know which practical jokes I mean. And most importantly, always remember, what is the Ratzon Hashem? Whenever you're confronted, think, ask yourself, what would Hashem want me to do? What would my rabbi want me to do? What would my parents want me to do? Believe in yourself. Follow your heart to thine own self. Be true. Be true to yourself, and you will be true to others. Take that light with you. Take that energy and really apply it to do good. Just keep approaching um, each day with the same enthusiasm that you came to school. Continue being the Benot Torah and the Bnei Torah that they have shown they can be and live life to the fullest. Take all of the old stuff that we taught you from thousands of years ago and make it special in your life today. Try to use all those skills to create the life that you most want. Remember, Anything is possible. If you work hard enough, you can achieve anything. And uh, share with us that nachat that without doubt you will bring to yourselves, your family, and on Israel. They have uh, so much potential, and they should uh, be worthy to reach that amazing potential. Infuse every single second of your life with Hashem, with Torah, with mitzvot, and you should be so good to be able to do so. So we hope that you, you, you gathered from us how much we love you, and how much we believe in you, how much, how much talent um, you all have, and that with that talent and discipline and effort, you will surely conquer the world. Congratulations on graduating. Have an amazing journey. Congratulations for all you have achieved. Love you all. Happy graduation, Mazel Tov. Mazel Tov, Mazel Tov, Mazel Tov. Thank you for joining us at this momentous occasion. Kindly keep the aisles clear, remain in your seats as we welcome the class of 2022.
and join Dylan Hamapur, class of 2015, for the singing of the Star Spangled Banner, followed by Atikva. It is with great pride that we ask Avi Brandler and Daniela Smuss to come to center stage, as Avi and his family will be making Aliyah this summer, and Daniela will be joining Saha. Kindly be seated. It is now my pleasure to call upon class salutatorian Rena Hackel to deliver the invocation.
We have been cheered on and supported by administrators and teachers along every step of our journey. We gained a home away from home, which provided a safe space to learn, grow, and explore. We were gifted with a strong foundation of Torah, family, and friendship to build upon as we leave the halls of hate and embark on the steps of our journey. We thank Hashem for our teachers who have so richly loved and cared for us, even when we stopped handing in our assignments because we got to college. I'm not included in that. For our families who have cheered us to the finish line, even if it was because we're finally moving out, I may be included in that group. And most importantly, we thank Hashem for the lifelong friendships that we have made. As we depart, we should always remember the gifts Hank has given us. Remember the faculty that will always be there for us and all that we've learned from them. Remember our love for each other that will remain with us always. I look forward to continuing to share celebrations and laughter with our class community in the future and for many years to come. to Rena Hackle in recognition of outstanding academic achievement, Hebrew Academy of Nassau County, Brookdale High School, class of 2022, Mazal Tov. It now gives me great pleasure to call upon my distinguished colleague, our associate principal, Mrs. Marie Pelea. Mrs. Pelea's attention to the academic and social-emotional welfare of each student is emblematic of her commitment to Chanoch Lenar Al Pidarko, educate each child according to their specific needs. Indeed, Mrs. Pelea masterfully sets the educational tenor of our yeshiva. Slimnicki. Esteemed parents, grandparents, families, faculty, board members, former graduates, current students, and our dear graduates, welcome to the graduation of the class of 2022. Tonight, as I look out and see so many smiling young men and women ready to greet their future, I'm filled with gratitude and pride. I look back this evening on your journey, a journey that started with the tentative steps of a ninth grader. And looking at you now, I see just how each of you have grown. Each of you possess the pride and confidence of a high school graduate. As your associate principal, it has been an honor and privilege to be part of your journey, filled with so many wonderful memories. I'd like to thank all of those who have guided, molded, and shaped this class. To the parents and families who have supported and encouraged you picked you up when you fell, and loved you unconditionally, we thank you. To our amazing faculty who have helped you to discover your abilities and to develop an inquiring mind, we thank you. My dear graduates, graduation from Hank concludes a significant and wonderful chapter of your life, but an equally significant and wonderful chapter is about to begin, a chapter full of the adventures of the adults you are becoming. You're leaving a world where others have made decisions for you. You're about to leave your comfort zone, your hang home and family. Soon, you'll be making your own decisions, deciding which road to travel. It sounds exciting and it will be, but it will have its challenges. When you feel overwhelmed, do not think you cannot. Just focus on how you can. It is in these moments that you will find that you have the strength you didn't know that you possessed. Maya Angelou once said, nothing can dim the light that shines from within. Each of you carries that light from within you. I've had the privilege to witness it for the past four years. Remember to always believe in yourself. And know that I will never forget that morning that you surprised me by hiring and organizing a mariachi band to serenade me and the entire school on my birthday. That small act of kindness meant so much to me and is something I will never forget. After four years of listening, hopefully actually listening, here we are for the final time. 
There are so many things I wish I could tell you before you head off into the world, but I know that you will have to learn most things on your own. There is one thing I wish that my principal would have told me when I graduated high school. Here it is, graduates. You are about to enter a world that needs your help. You will have to make choices each day, choices that will be yours and yours alone to make, because that is what life is, a series of choices that both defines your character and puts you on a path in life. Most of these choices will be made without a second thought. Should I hit the snooze button? Should I be late to class and stop for coffee? Know that you will make mistakes. Everyone does. But what matters most is what you learn from your mistakes. Every step forward is a step towards achieving something bigger and better. And each day teaches us another lesson. The truth is, we never stop learning. My wish for you, my dear graduates, is for each of you to continue to find people that fill you with confidence, love and challenge you, that inspire and motivate you. Remember, there are a thousand things that you can't control in your life, but what you always can control is yourself, your thoughts, your feelings, and your reactions. You are in the driver's seat of your life. Speaking about cars, Remember what your fellow graduate, Daniela Smus, spoke so eloquently about at the bonfire of senior trip. She asked everyone, what's the first thing you see when you turn on your Waze app? Waze asks you, where to? Thinking about that question, I would like to take it a step further. My dear graduates, where you, which path you take, your where to, is up to you. You have everything that you need to navigate the roadways of your life. You don't need to follow an app. You need to follow your heart. The accomplishments of this class is outstanding. And yes, they are one of my favorites. I want to thank each of you for making a difference in my life and in the lives of all those around you. Remember that now is your time to shine and nothing or no one can dim the light that shines from within each of you. Mazel tov. Thank you. There'll be time for that. Okay? Not now. I now have the honor to introduce a valedictorian. Adine Moskowitz. Adine is a young man who is going to make a difference in the world. He's an outstanding academic performer as well as a role model and leader. His drive for knowledge is unmatched and his level of commitment to his studies and community is endless. Adine has been a leader both in and out of the classroom. Last year he participated in the International Jerusalem Science Competition and came in first place, presenting his research on neutron starquakes. He has served as chairperson for a robotics club, co-captain of Mathletes, co-chair of astronomy, co-editor and writer for our STEM journal and Midrash Shahin. Adin is truly an exceptional young man, and we wish him luck next year as he continues to learn in Israel, followed by attending Cornell University to study engineering. It is now my great pleasure to call upon Adi Moskowitz, a valedictorian. We have really accomplished a tremendous amount 
It is amazing to celebrate with everyone here together. I would like to share a concept with you that has helped me navigate through my life. If you look around, you would obviously think that we are all here together, but in fact, we are each sitting in different rooms. Let me explain. Imagine a waiting room. Someone lightly opens the door, walks over, and sits down in a comfy armchair. They look around the room and see a soft beige rug on the floor, nicely arranged seating, and the sun brilliantly shining through the window. A few minutes later, the door sharply swings open, and a person enters, plopping down onto another chair. They look around and see a faded carpet with frayed edges, old worn out chairs, and the sun beating down on their face making them uncomfortably warm and blinded by the light. Even though both of these people are right next to each other, in reality, they are sitting in different rooms. They are experiencing their surroundings completely differently. All of our experiences are modeled around how we decide to perceive our surroundings. We all have the ability to choose our perspective about the world and change how we live and see our lives. In this week's Parsha Ba'alotcha, we find the story of the Jews complaining about the man, the bread from heaven. There were a certain people called the Heir of Rav, whom Rashi explains were converts who joined B'nai Israel when they were leaving Egypt. But these were not any ordinary converts, since otherwise they'd be called Gerim. The term Heir of Rav, mixed multitude, refers to those whose motivations and intentions were confused. They convinced B'nai Israel that their lives were awful because of their lack of meat and that the holy man, the food of spiritual and physical perfection, was no longer enough to sustain them. And so they came to Moshe and Aaron and complained. I don't know about you, but I am personally quite fond of meat. It is understandable to want meat, or at least something different than the same food every day, even if it could taste different. Rashi helps clarify the sin of the people and reveals a shocking piece of what the Erev Rav had done. If we look at Shemot Yud Bet, Lamachet, we can see that the Pasuk explicitly states, the Gam Erev Rav Allah Itam. And also, a great mixed multitude went up with them. Bitson Bakar Miknek Habed Me'od. And flocks and cattle, very much livestock. Besides for the fact that it was insensitive of the Jewish people, to complain about God sending them bread from heaven, especially after the splitting of the sea and the receiving of the Torah. From here, we can clearly see that the Israel did, in fact, have meat right in front of them and in great quantity. What exactly is going on here? The Torah is teaching us that if you adopt a negative attitude, it will blind you from seeing the good right in front of you. The Ibn of Rav, the mixed multitude's negativity was so contagious that it spread to the rest of B'nai Israel and caused them to completely ignore the meat that was right before them. The same applies to every aspect of our lives. How we choose to perceive our world, that becomes reality. We, the class of 2022, lived through a period of time in Erev Rav, a truly mixed up era. But with the help of each other, and with the values of Torah and learning that we were taught from Hank, we were able to succeed and make it here today. And this is something which we could not have achieved alone. The Eir of Rav themselves needed to amass members from the Nei Israel in order to have enough of an impact on the people and confuse their perceptions. Just as negativity needs a group consciousness to spread, so does positivity. The story continues. Moshe falls into despair as the people sin against God. Moshe opens up to God and questions why he was put in such a difficult situation. What is interesting is not Moshe's despair, but how Hashem responds to it. Instead of trying to cheer him up, Hashem tells Moshe, Gather for me seventy of Israel's elders, and I will draw upon the spirit that is on you and put it upon them. They shall share the burden of the people with you, so you shall 
not bear it alone. Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs, is a Kohen of the Bracha, explains that Hashem is teaching us that the way of the Eir Rav can also be used for good, to find and connect with great people, to spread positivity, kindness, and Torah into the world, to help us recognize the holiness of Hashem and the greatness of our lives right in front of us. In Perkei Avod it says, Make for yourself a mentor and acquire for yourself a friend. This is what Hashem did for Moshe, gathering the elders to help bear the burden of leadership and spread positivity to the Jewish people. This is what we have found at Hank. Our administrators, rabbis, morot, and teachers have been the best mentors that one could ever ask for. You can feel it every day how they aren't just there for the job, but that they truly love teaching and want to see each and every student reach their potential. To my class, you are the most amazing friends. You have been nothing but kind and supportive, always brightening up my day. We are all so grateful to Hashem for giving us Hank, for the role models, guidance, and passion for positivity to help us through any era of love. As we graduate high school, let us preserve the bonds we have formed here at Hank and take our friendships wherever we go. We should take Hashem's example and look out for the right people to be our mentors and friends through, through the worst and best of times to help us see the best in the world which Hashem created for us. May Hashem bless us with success and the ability to find the right perspective, mentors, and friends. I hope we all choose to live in the sunny room and watch as it illuminates our lives. Thank you. Awarded to Adi Moskowitz in recognition of outstanding academic achievement, Hebrew Academy of Nassau County, Class of 2022, Mazal Tov. Feel free to sing along, everybody.
Thank you so much. At this time, it gives me great pleasure to call upon our assistant principal, Ms. Zipporah Zucker, to share a message. Ms. Zucker's thoughtful approach to all educational matters, models for our faculty and students alike, what a values-driven education is all about. And even as tonight is all about you, the graduates, the setting, the program, and the content which highlight the graduation are a tribute and a taste of what our students and staff experience under the leadership of Ms. Zucker. the mitzvah of the Kohanim to bless the Jewish people. Indeed, this is the reason that until this day, the Kohanim bless us in the Bet Knesset. Go to the next slide, please. Before the Kohanim give their blessing to the community, the Kohanim 
make a separate bracha like we do on any mitzvah. It is in the wording of this bracha, Levarech et Amo Yisrael, the Ahava, to bless his nation Yisrael with love, that we find a deeper meaning, that of love and gratitude. To commentators, they wonder why the word Ahava is added to this bracha. To, to understand the strong significance of Ahava, we must understand the makeup of Jewish society in the days of the Torah. Owning land and farming was the essential way Jews made a living. It was not the stock market. However, the Kohanim were an exception in that they were not permitted to own land. In fact, their needs were provided for by the Jewish people through various gifts of produce, livestock, and money as directed by Torah law. The Kohanim literally owed their existence to the greater Jewish community. Without the people, they would not have survived. Given the system, the love that the Kohanim felt for Am Yisrael was a natural outgrowth of their intense gratitude to the people who, sus who sustained them. That is why the bracha includes the word Be'ahava. In a sense, your last 12 years, you have been sustained as somewhat like little Kohanim by the incredible community made up of your grandparents, parents, rabbis, moros, and teachers. They have provided you with material needs, iPhones, iPads, as well as emotional, academic, and educational support. Like the Kohanim of old, you cannot help but feel love and gratitude towards them. Tonight's graduation is your cue. It is now your turn to do your job, your tafkid, to bless the Jewish community, the Ahava, the life you will choose to lead, your accomplishments you will have, every person you will inspire, and every mitzvah you will do after you walk off this stage will be a bracha to the Jewish community and to the world, the Ahava with love. Speaking not as your assistant principal right now, perhaps I too feel like a little cousin, deeply grateful of having experienced firsthand the sincerity of your love and devotion that you, the class of 2022, has shown throughout the past four years, and especially in recent months. And to top it off, I was so grateful that on May 31st, each and every one of you showed up for the graduation picture, cap and gown. It was literally a miracle, poured on about by your dedication um, and your devotion to Hank High School. The class speakers, the class speakers were nominated and voted on by the entire grade. We already heard from Grace Hirschberg at the senior celebration, and I would now like to introduce our graduation class speaker, Yaal Vasali, exemplified the quality of the Ahava. Her love for Hank and her teachers and peers is totally obvious. She demonstrates her gratitude by giving back in so many ways. She's bright, friendly, and channels her strength to support important causes, especially when it comes to Israel advocacy, student senate, recruitment, peer tutoring, as well as other initiatives. She has made a great impact on the Hang community and beyond. It is my pleasure to introduce the young lady standing near me, the class speaker, Yaha Vasali. <laughs> Love your neighbor as yourself. 
And lastly, the Benpazi's phase, the most important of us to the Torah phase, and to Kevis HaRafa, to Aseba Boker, and to Kevis HaShemi, to Aseb Ben Harlim. One sheep shall be offered in the morning, and the second in the afternoon. Whereas we might say nowadays, Shakari, Mincha, and Arvit. At a first glance, Ben Pazi's statement seems quite puzzling. Why would a pasuk about sheep be the most important pasuk in the Torah? But my Lord Jonathan Sachs explains that this question can be answered with one simple word, ruti. The meaning of Ben Pazi's statement is clear. A person can have the best ideas and the best intentions, but they count for little until they are turned into habits of action that become habits of the heart. We can all recall moments of insider epiphanies we had throughout high school, whether it was a specific lesson or an assembly when we suddenly understood what life is about, what greatness is, and how we would like to live. However, a day, a week, or at most a year later, the inspiration fades and becomes a distant memory, and we are left as we were before, unchanged. The key is to take what we learned here at Hank and make it a part of our routine. Our routines for the past four years consisted of waking up, rushing to get ready for school, running to bagel balls, saying hello to Mr. Smith's display at the door, getting our carnival bracelets, maybe getting our phones taken away, dominating in the beginning of our day, learning from our amazing Rabbi and Moro, whose classes always feel too short once the musical bells are played. Then we socialize during lunch and end our day with math, science, history, English, and maybe some art classes or trips to college guidance. That, but that's not all. Our day doesn't end there. We all come back after school for sports and all the other activities going on after school hours. This routine has been our guide, our version of one sheet in the morning and one sheet in the afternoon. But we are talking about sacrifices. Let me just take a moment to say thank you to our grandparents and parents for making so many sacrifices for this routine. Thank you for prioritizing a Jewish education. Thank you for prioritizing a Hank Yeshiva education. Thank you, parents. And I must thank Hank as a whole for accepting me as a transfer student in the 10th grade and giving me every opportunity to succeed. One sheep in the morning and one sheep in the afternoon. Our routine was crafted in construction by no one else but the board, administration, our principals and teachers worked endlessly to make our Hank experience unlike any other yeshiva. Through the schools in the tri-state area, Hank has the recognition of being a student-centric school, which develops Jewish leaders of the future. In my community alone, we have numerous Hank alumni who are rabbis, teachers, community leaders, physicians, and successful entrepreneurs. You can tell the impression this Hank routine has made when you come across any Hank alumni. My dad, hey dad, who's in the audience tonight was part of the Hank class of 1992, 30 years ago, and he still does not stop talking about his days at Hank. And any time you come across a Hank student, whether you know them or not, no matter the age, year they graduated, where their family came from, they have this essence, a spirit, an energy that no one else has. Some think it was an ingredient in fancy cheese bagels. Others say the muffins are infused with something that just makes every year a big sign. But I think it's something invented in the daily learning with our rabbinim and moral, our teachers included. These lessons they have taught us in their mito, which make us identifiable. My fellow graduates, we may be graduating from Hank and going into the real world, but it is our job to be the ambassadors of these values we have learned. We must continue to demonstrate the Havad Yisrael and the Midot that Hank has instilled in us. We must continue to carry the torch of Torah and love and Mitzvot that Hank has instilled in us. We must certainly carry the love of Midinah Yisrael and Tzirut that Hank has ingrained in us. Let's take these lessons, our routines, and spread them to the world. In closing, I would just like to add, everyone knows that I have a slight obsession with the Actus poem. I've ca captured candid moments over the past few years, and it's time for one last one.
awarded to Yael Basali for having been selected by her peers as speaker of the class, Hebrew County of Nassau County, class of 2022. shows that less than 50% of American Jews are currently married, ages 25 to 54. 60% of those married Jews have chosen to marry non-Jews. Of the remainder, only a third are raising their children as Jewish, which leaves us with 15% of Jewish American children being raised Jewish. In other words, we're shrinking. Good for us that we have our own statistics. For example, more than 75% of you are continuing on to yeshivot and seminaries to enhance the Jewish education that your Rabbeim and Marot have instilled upon you. Every day that you woke up and walked through our doors and davened and participated in the New Orleans mission and was a finalist in the Chidon HaTanah, and won the Jewish science competition. You did your part to reverse the trend. Okay, great. As you excelled in your APs, as you represented us on the volleyball team and the dance team, as you go off to your prestigious colleges that you have chosen with the scholarships that you have earned, you have the opportunity to show the world that we as religious Jews can live in this world, succeed in it, and reverse the trends and turn the tide. That's what we're here for, you and I in Olam Hazar. I'm gonna end with something that Richard Joel said when he retired from Yeshiva University. The most important things that we can give to our children are roots and wings. All of the people in this room, your parents, your grandparents, your Abayim, your Morot, your teachers, we have all been privileged to help you plant those roots, and we cannot wait to watch you fly. Mazal tov. Thank you, Dr. Kushner. As just seen, the success of any school is dependent on a series of different partnerships. A most critical one is the collaboration between lay and professional leadership. At Hank, 
We are blessed with a board of directors and a board of education composed of the most dedicated and selfless individuals. Let me take this opportunity to public, publicly recognize all of you for the, for the support you voluntarily give our yeshiva. In particular, I'd like to hi highlight Chairman of the Board of Directors, Mr. Arya Eisner. Perhaps to you graduates better known as the husband of beloved history chair and history teacher, Mrs. Laura Eisner. Arya is a leader who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. The work that we do as educators is not possible without the Herculean and at times thankless efforts of our administrative offices. I would like to recognize our executive director, Mrs. Racheli Hackel. Her professional presence is the embodiment of what a synthesized life of Toru Maza can look like. Mazel tov to Racheli and Morty on Rina's graduation and recognition this evening. The apple fell very close to the tree. And finally, Dr. Lauren Deitch, outgoing chairperson of the Board of Education. Lauren possesses incredible instinct and intuition in all matters of education. I know I speak for all Hank principals in noting how down to earth and thoughtful Lauren is, making, her accept making herself accessible at all times as a calm voice of reason. Lauren, you have devoted more than 30 years to leadership at Hank, even after your children graduated. Growing our institution, both in enrollment and in academic offerings, a tribute, listen carefully, to your stewardship. Thank you, appreciate it. At least, at least one person got it. Thank you, Lauren. You are an incredible partner and leader. We invite Hannah Rubinson, a proud fellow Merrick resident, to join me at the podium. Lauren, please join us on stage to receive a token of appreciation from the high school for your de decades of dedication. We know that your successor, Dr. Deborah Alper, class of 2000, and current Hank High School parent, has learned from the best. Graduates, before you is a special assembly of people, the lifeblood of our school, the dedicated Rebellion Moreau teachers and staff. Faculty and staff, please stand up. Ladies and gentlemen, the faculty and staff of Hebrew Academy of Nassau County High School. Thank you. Heartfelt thank you for your inspirational work professionalism, commitment, patience, and understanding. May Hashem, may Hashem bless each, of, each one of you with nachas and joy from your families in merit of all the work that you do for your students. I'd also like to applaud our terrific HSA high school administrative team. Please join me in recognizing these exemplars of aspirational academics, impeccable mido, and professional leadership. Director of Admissions, Ms. Miriam Steiner. Director of College Guidance, Ms. Karen Sheff. Director of Israel Guidance, Rabbi Avram Ismach. Director of Counseling, Mrs. Rebecca Gordon. Director of Learning Center, Mrs. Allison Huss. Director of Student Life, Rabbi Danielle Mezzi. Dean of Students, Mr. Avi Smus. Special Mazel Tov to Mr. Smus and Aviva on Daniela's graduation tonight. Your ahava ta'aretz and commitment to chinuch are seen through the young woman Daniela has become. Kudos, kudos to our stellar team in the educational offices, Mrs. Jackie Rofim, Mrs. Chaya Friedman, and Mrs. Sippy Brenner. I'd also like to recognize and thank Ms. Naomi Fredman, our Director of Educational Technology, for coordinating elements of this evening's program, as well as, 
our ongoing educational programs and systems through a, throughout Hanks Divisions. Now, parents of graduates, please stand up. Please stand up, you can do it, you can do it. Graduates, we thank your parents for entrusting us and you their most prized possessions and for giving us such high quality product with which to do our sacred work. Mazel tov and thank you. And now, grandparents, please stand up. Masora, Mazal Tov, and thank you. Many of the graduates of the class of 2022 have been with us at Hank for many years. Please join me in recognizing the various principals, Mrs. Trudy Rubenstein in our ECC, Rabbi Kalman Fogel, Plainview, Rabbi Uriel Chazan in his freshman year at our West Hempstead campus. Rabbi Elliot Hecht, My Mitchell Field partner from the middle school, your warmth, energy, thoughtfulness, allegiance to the Hank mission, and flavor sets the tone for all of us on each of the campuses. To my colleagues, tonight is as much your simcha as it is ours. And finally, I'd like to welcome a special guest here with us this evening, guests here with us this evening, Rabbi and Rebbitz and Robert Block, Rabbi and Rebbitzin Emeritus of the Roslyn Synagogue, who are here celebrating Kayla's graduation. They served the Nassau County community for almost 50 years. They are involved in the Hank family for over four decades. They are now both Hank parents and grandparents. Special mazel tov to Kayla's father, Alicia, class of 95. And now for the moment you've been waiting for, the distribution of diplomas. I'd like to invite Mrs. Pelea, Ms. Zucker, Mr. Smuss, and Rabbi Mezzi to please join me. The assembled are asked to remain seated as photos with diplomas have already been taken and will be mailed to all families. All graduates receive a safe fare from the Parents' Council. For those of you here who were here last year, that was a win.
Daniela Yukadayev. Jessica Kaziev, Rosalina Asharov, Devora Finko, <laughs> Madame President Katie Davis, Brother Jesse, incoming freshman 2026. Reba Goldberg, Mazel Tov to my dear childhood friend Allegra. Reba's mom, Sarah Moshev, <laughs> Rebecca Shalomov, <laughs> Jessica Hayes, <laughs> Sarah Sioni, <laughs> Juliana Sigletti.
I too brought my own, but I won't pop mine. I won't pop mine. <laughs> this is not yet the moment of tossing your cap. It's not yet. That's to come. But it is the moment that you should move your tassels from right to left. <laughs> by the power vested in me by the state of New York, I hereby declare the class of 2022 to be graduates of the Hebrew Academy of Nassau County. Mazal Tov. Ori Bear, Ori Bear has just informed me that if we, uh, if we do one of those smoke things again, the fire department may have to come. That was an Ori Bear because of the fire department, so we need to make sure that we, uh, we stay away from the, the powder ones. Okay, I, we don't want to have to exit the, uh, the, the, um, the room here. And hopefully nobody slips on the stage. Hopefully. I'm me. Thank you, Ms. Yushanli. A graduation tradition is for there to be one final lesson shared with the graduating class. Just what everyone wants. One more class, another sheer, a final lecture. Indeed, during this season of graduation, that's exactly what happens. Thousands of such speeches delivered with principles sharing a culminating thought to inspire and mobilize. But not tonight. We've already devoted four years offering lessons in each and every class, every Dvar Torah program, Shabbaton, Chagiga club, and team event. If you haven't gotten it by now, you're probably not up here. But you are. So you, you don't need another lesson. Tonight I'd like to give words to a lesson that the Hank class of 2022 has taught others. To frame what you have given your teachers, given your parents, your families, and your peers in the other Hank grades. And so, by Daber Hashem Moshe Leimor, Zo Sashir Lalaviyim Biben Chamesh Vesum Shana Vamala, Yavol Tzvot Tzvot Avodas, Oel Moed. A levy begins at 25 years old. A levy's work ends at 50 years old. They worked amongst their peers. This is a rather nondescript passage of this coming week's Parsha Balosa, establishing the age requirements for when a levy can serve. Not so interesting. I agree. Yet I'd like to suggest this passage contains within it the secret sauce of the class of 2022. Ellie, you with me? The Torah outlines that when a le We practice this at the dinner, remember? We don't do that. The Torah outlines that when a lady turns 50 years old, Vilo Yavodod, his job is done. No more service for him. Yet the very next words read, that the lady will continue to serve his fellow man in the O.L. Moed. The contradiction is clear. Does the 50-year-old lady have a unionized forced retirement at 50? Or may he still remain in the service after the big 5-0? Rashi explains that at 50, the lady's laborious and particular role of avodas kaseit, carrying the elements of the mishkan from one encampment to the next, ends. However, their role as ministering levy does not end at 50. They continue to serve as guards of the Mishkan, making sure the doors are locked. They continue as the melodious choir singing Shira to Hashem, and they remain porters loading and unloading the temple's wagons. The taxing physical labor of the levy stops at 50, but the other special levy roles continue indefinitely. This is the meaning of Vesheres Es Echav. Rashi explains Im Echav. The 50-year-old Levi may be retired from the Levi Moving Company, but he continues to serve with his Levi brothers in song, security, and service, even as the back-breaking labor of schlepping the Mishkan concluded at age 50. I'd like to suggest that the sacred task of carrying beams and other furniture-like items via shoulders is saturated with meaning. The lady did not carry items alone. One lady's shoulder was necessarily connected to the others as they choreographed a balanced movement of the holy items. The task of one lady 
required the efforts of his fellow levy. Furthermore, it is specifically the levy's shoulders which carry the Mishkan's furniture, the part of our bodies that can both bear a material burden, but also allow the material to juxtapose our heads, the epicenter of our kesher with Hashem, our minds. Carrying, specifically through our shoulders, as the Levium did, brings us to a place of reliance on our fellow man and to a place of realizing that material must be elevated. While this idea is my own, I believe I came to it this Shabbos as I began looking at this coming week, Cetera, because it is the lesson that you, the class of 2022, teach us. My words are not a message to you, but rather a formulation and reflection of what you, as a class, have modeled for us. In my still short tenure here, I've observed your great absolute appreciation for the other. Many of you have advocated to me, Mrs. Pelea, Ms. Zucker, Mr. Smuff, not for yourselves, not for yourselves, but for your friend. I have yet to observe a student in your class eat lunch or walk the hallways without a classmate. Your teachers, they talk about the camaraderie that is your class. Your commitment to the group is legendary. Your ability to even organize whatever happened this evening, pretty good. Simply watching you in the lobby of the hotel on senior trip was a testament to your achdus. This achdus is most definitely a credit to your individual and collective character, the great work of your parents and families, guidance and direct direction from a fantastic faculty, but it is also a reflection of the maturation you have all experienced together through some of the most difficult times a person can experience. From COVID, quarantine, social distancing, and remote learning, through family illness, and even life's greatest challenges. These were part of your lives throughout high school. You were not just resilient through a pandemic. You were stubbornly committed to unity, consistency, advancement, and growth. And you didn't just make it. You were magnificent. And not you, the individual. You, the friend, were, were magnificent in supporting the person sitting next to you. That's the secret sauce. You understood that the person next to you, even if not your best friend, needed someone to help them hold their burden. It was for you to be that person. You did so by raising each other onto your shoulders, lifting each other's spirits, elevating, dancing at chagigas, singing with each other on Friday morning during breakfast, helping each other with work, making sure everyone got their retreat and trip registrations in on time, by letting them know that Slamniki is coming so they might find their collared shirt, through WhatsApp or Snap, text or iMessage. You did it often and always, even from ninth grade. In 20 years of education, and I believe for my colleagues who are in this longer than I, we have never met a group like yours. Magical in your support of each other. Mystical in your uplifting demeanor. And it is only after the lady carries on their shoulders the burden of their friends for 20 or 30 years does the Torah describe them as Vishayres Esachav, that they serve with their fellows, that they become one. After 25 years, it takes the lady. But your class has achieved that level of Vishayres Esachav in just four. And so this peer-to-peer -peer support explains the successes of this class why more than 75% will be making the one-year Aliyah to continue Torah studies in Eretz Israel, and why your great expanded our AP offerings, why your great achieved college admissions that rival any class in Hank history, and why no other yeshiva can claim to have a fan culture like ours. Because you understand how to hold the burden of your friend, not just to prevent them from faltering, but in a way that brings them to the successes that without your friendship, they may never have realized. As Rabbi Gada Smith would always say, have good friends. In the history of Hank, there has yet to be a class that lives this message more clearly, more clearly than yours. On, my, on behalf of my colleagues in the administration and faculty, who I know you all love and respect, 
Now that you are graduating, we hope that we can be included in your group of friends. And as they say, friends are forever. Mazal tov. Delight in the original work of Jessica Haynes. Times gone by are times long gone. The years, colored in shades of blue and green, have passed us by like the scenery outside a car window. They are disappeared, vanished in a whisper of wind and breath. But the memories remain. A picture, a time frozen, is all that stays. Our relationships, treasured and nurtured during our years, will morph and change, perhaps fading, perhaps grow stronger through the hardships that come. The bricks and mortar of a building home stand still through storms and thunder, a living memorial to our childhood. We will sometimes yearn for the safety and familiarity of that monument, a haven within the troubled time. But we can't go back, not really. We can only go forward, the path ahead lay trodden and bare or perhaps overgrown in our knees. We will forge our own ways, our own lives. It will be hard and sometimes rocky, but we will endure. Ourselves as people will endure the struggles, the trials and tribulations of years and yearning. Some of us will grow too fast hardened and eroded by the waves, crashing against our shores, but we will remain. We will push through. Some of us will take it step by step, testing the water, and going in slow, taking it slow. We started out young, untouched and untroubled by the world, the test of time. We have laughed and we have cried. Sometimes we have embarrassed ourselves and sometimes we cheered. But we have enjoyed our time, some people more, some people less. We ended older, not yet old, but not children either, perhaps something in between. We have bloomed and blossomed, overtaking this earthy ground. We will put our roots down and they will dig deep in the shallow world, eliminating hate and hurt, handing over healing and health. But for now, it is time to leave, to explore and to conquer, to give and to take. To the class of 2022, and to us. Just a taste, that was just a taste of the talent in the class of 2022. Beautiful Jessica. And now for our salutatorian O Bear. We are blessed to be on the receiving end of your benediction, your bracha, to your classmates. Who is wise? The one who learns from every person. As I was searching for a meaningful quote, this got me thinking about the proud people we are becoming and who we owe our thanks to for the traits about ourselves that we cherish. So it made me wonder, how much of what I'm proud to say is really me or simply wonderful aspects of people I love? It was only once I took the time to reflect about the important people in my life that I could appreciate how they've shaped me as a person. 
the jokes we tell, the things we're passionate about, the causes we stand for, all have been influenced through the sacrifices of the most important people in our lives, our family, our teachers, and most of all, our friends. I'd like to start with my family. It was recently in a CVS pharmacy that I acknowledged that the bear spirit is strong within me, whether I like it or not, and I'm proud of it. As I found myself getting excited at a 50% sale of crayons, when I don't draw and I don't need them, you can appreciate a good bargain. It's needless to say how much my family is shaping as a person, needless to describe the extent of the sacrifices, the patience, and the trouble I put them through, but I couldn't appreciate it more as I stand here right now. Every graduate here can say the same about their families. To our elite tier teachers, who each and every one imparted us with their knowledge and compassion, I couldn't help but name a couple. Rabbi Weingott, who's never, <laughs> rah, 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 who's never in any supply of warmth and compassion, taught us how to love each person for who they are. Thank you. And for Mrs. Palea, Mrs. P. or better known as Mama Playa. First of all, we know that we're your favorite class. You don't have to say it, we know it. <laughs> Seriously though, you taught us that no matter how heavy the burden, no matter how many billions of problems are bothering you in your day, to treat everybody's concerns with an equal level of respect and make everybody feel cared for, we'll miss you. And finally, to my class, my friends, my fellow graduates, Nobody would be here today if it weren't for the saviors that posted Quizlets on the chat before tests. And of course, of course, we have to give Yomi a thank you for helping people make it up to the stage today. Yep. But more seriously though, I can't possibly name everybody who had an impact on me. And there was always something different that made me look forward to the next class. But I tried. Yoel's Ruach, Riva's elbow fixation, George's smile, Yell's disco pictures, all of you with your hype boosting Alexander McQueen's and absurd trucker hats made me love coming to school. It made me love being around you guys, and it made me able to say that by the end of everything, I love you all. So, I was asked to give a rough up to you all, so here it goes. May we all recognize the amazing gifts we've been bestowed by Maureen, Moreau, teachers, families, and friends to give us the strength of character and individuality that we so proudly show off today, and to realize that no matter what our next step and where it takes us, or what our challenges lay ahead of us, that we should take it and tackle it with a skip in our step and a smile on our faces. Thank you. Awarded to Tony Bear in recognition of outstanding academic achievement, Hebrew Academy of Nassau County, class of 2022. Tonight's collation sponsors the Astute family in memory of Shaya's grandfather, Ben Hur Ben Rachel, Eli Shaya family in memory of Eli's grandmother, Miriam Batsuri, and Rafur Rafua Shlema, Benjamin Netanel Ben Brachatova, Eliyahu Ben Chefzi, Sveta Bat Osnat, the Lindenblatt family in memory of Ethan's grandparents, Miriam Fagi Bat Yitzchak, Betzal Ben Asher Angel, the Sokol family in honor of Eliana and the graduating class of 2022, and the Spizer family in honor of Michael. The recessional will follow the cap tossing, followed by Tfilat Arvit Mariv here on the stage. Please rise and remain standing throughout the recessional, allowing the graduates to exit first. Graduates, now it's your time to rise. Get ready to toss your caps. Not yet, but on the count of three. The pick will be epic. One, two, We'll start again from one. One, two, three. <laughs> Mazel tov.
the stage. Marib is beginning right now on the stage. <laughs> 